Hello there, YouTube. Devin here again. And uh, today, uh, much like I did uh, my helm video where I picked what I, uh, for personal preference, would choose uh, the best three in my collection as far as composite helmets go. Uh, that video that had the uh, Gen 1 lightweight helmet, the 6B27, and um, the... Uh, Fuck, what was it now? But, uh, you get what I'm saying. That that video that had the three helmet comparisons, uh, the three composite helmet comparisons, and what I look for as far as personal preferences go, um, I'm going to do a steel one today. And, uh, what I look for in steel helmets, now, I understand that steel helmets predate a lot of the stuff that I'm looking for, um, but a lot of my... A lot of the stuff that I am looking for has been prevalent really since their uh, conception. I really just want an adjustable crown and sweatband um, uh, so I can, uh, you know, scale it for winter and stuff like that. And I want a um, relatively stable chin strap. That's not really hard to come by. Uh, as far as the shells go, uh, the shells could really uh, be negligible in this case uh, because I'm really looking more for the suspension. I really, um, but I'm looking for a shell that offers a moderate amount of coverage. I don't need the most coverage possible, um, and I don't uh, want a lot of myself exposed. We're looking for for a moderate amount of coverage. So I think uh, three helmets. This was a hard decision. I have a lot of steel helmets. Uh, I've picked three. That would probably uh, be my first choices if I had to take one of uh, these into battle. The uh, If I had to pick any steel helmet. And uh, they're all from pretty much the same era. So uh, uh, these are kind of late steel helmets. So like Cold War era steel helmets. I'll probably do like an early version. Uh, so like World War II and prior uh, version of this video too. So we'll um, take a look at that. Uh, I'll, I'll think about doing that if this video gets enough views, but, um, first of all, we're gonna get right into it. Uh, this would be, uh, probably my, uh, third choice, to be honest, of steel helmets in my collection, uh, to take into battle, and it's the Romanian, uh, M79 helmet, uh, but it's not an original M79, because the originals, uh, M79s, uh, would have had the, uh, slots for the badge on it, uh, so this is a, uh, the second version of the Romanian M79, which itself is a revised version of the Romanian uh, M34, uh, which is based off the Dutch uh, helmet. Looks exactly the same. They had the same liner and the same chin strap and everything. Um, but so the Dutch uh, one uh, that Romania adopted would have been pretty much the same shape, except it would have had a lot much a la larger skirt. That would have flared out. That kind of got cut off in the M79 model. And it would have been to had a rolled rim. Whereas this has a raw edge. Now I'm a big fan of having the uh, rolled rims. Uh, because for one it keeps your helmet covers intact. I don't have a helmet cover for this one yet. I'm looking for one though. If you So if you have a Romanian helmet cover. Um, I'm very interested in uh, finding one. That's in pretty good condition to put on this helmet. Uh, so, But I, I the raw edge uh, tends to be sharp. And you can uh, cut yourself as a well as it tends to uh, damage the equipment that it comes in contact with it'll fray webbing and everything like that just because it's a sharper edge uh but it's not so bad on this helmet they did a pretty good job rounding it so it's actually pretty uh not as sharp as a lot of raw edged helmets um but this helmet offers a very very um ergonomic design uh it's probably one of the few steel helmets that still uh relevant on the modern battlefield because all that a helmet really has to do is stop s lower velocity pistol rounds and shrapnel, which this helmet does. It does just fine. There's plenty of ballistic tests on the uh, internet that shows that this helmet meets those requirements because it is such aggressively sloped. Uh, if you look at the sides here, how, how aggressive those are compared to a lot of other helmets, and look at the front slope on this thing. That is a pretty shallow front slope as far as helmets go the the closest it gets to vertical is right in the back and even then that's still a pretty pretty good slope and so what that does is instead of transferring the energy right into the shell it um changes the direction that the energy is exerted uh upwards so it um 
kind of negates a lot of impacts by changing the directional energy to upwards and deflecting uh, incoming shrapnel and bullets away. Uh, this helmet uh, is actually uh, was in use with Romania up until very, very recently. I think the last two years or so they were still using these actually. And uh, recently they've sent m most of their M79 helmets to Afghanistan. Whereas this is one of the standard helmets of the uh, newly created Afghan National Army. Uh, they use a combination of three helmets. Um, uh, they use East German uh, M56 helmets. They use Romanian M70, M73 helmets, which are these or whatever. And um, SSH-68 helmets. So uh, from Russian stocks. And those three helmets all have a lot in common. They're very aggressively sloped. Um, they all have uh, four-point chin straps, uh, except for the SSH-68, but the ones that were sent to Afghanistan have a modified four-point chin strap put in them. So, um, but these are actually incredibly effective helmets. If you're looking for a very uh, cheap helmet to uh, use if you can't really afford Kevlar and you wanted to still have decent battlefield protection, this is a good option. One of those three options that I said that the a and are using are all actually really good options because uh, they're all relatively cheap, they're all relatively easy to find, and um, they offer adequate protection just because of how they're designed. Now, um, this helmet uh, has probably one of the more comfortable liners of the three I'm going to show you. It is a um, chin strap here, and we'll start with the chin strap. It's a brown leather, it's all riveted in place. It's adjustable with like uh, keyholes. I'll zoom in on the keyholes there for you. So it's these brass uh, studs, um, or steel studs, I guess. Um, they just have this kind of yellowy coating on them. As you can see, this helmet is brand new. I'll zoom in there, you can still see the uh, covering on the steel D-rings there that they used uh, to keep it from rusting in storage. Um, but this brown leather chin strap is very simple. It's four point, um, and then it's adjusted here. It's got keepers for this big tongue, and you would just wrap the tongue through these D-rings and then pack through them, and that's how you would adjust the fit. And uh, you would adjust the uh, how far you want the chin strap to sit forward or how high you want it to based on these um, how you have these key positions up here. So, um, then it has uh, one of these cool things, which makes it really comfortable. It has this nape uh, guard that comes down, and that's adjustable with this slider buckle. It's like a little brass uh, sheet stamped slider buckle. It has four tongues of actually um, pretty flexible leather, smooth inside, um, kind of like you would get on shoes. This is like shoe leather. Um, same thing with this, whereas this is like pebbled though, and the inside isn't. This is a much more flexible leather than the, the ones that the tongues are made out of. Uh, it's all held in place. They're uh, reinforced eyelets like a lot of helmets don't have. Uh, so the reinforced eyelets are going to help produce the longevity of the helmet. And it has this uh, wool uh, crown pad in it to uh, further aid comfort. And that's going to help uh, with shock absorption as well. So that's what makes this helmet very, very good and uh, still relevant on today's battlefield. And you can find them in really, really good condition because they were built to last, like most kind of uh, Soviet-era technology. So um, now we're going to move on to my number number two pick. And uh, all these helmets, by the way, have their own videos, um, too, if you wanted to get more in-depth on the history of everyone. And this is, the, uh, this is the French F1 helmet. And now this helmet... Uh, seems to be, uh, it's not really written down anywhere, but it's pretty much a kind of scaled down SSH-40 shape on the shell. Uh, and you can see the shell in its own video if you want to see just the bare shell, but I'm leaving the cover on it for this video because this is how I would grab it because it has the cover on it already. Um, and uh, it's held in place with uh, rivets kind of like an M1. It has like an M1 style-ish liner where it has the suspension... Uh, it's a nylon type suspension. Uh, it's leather covering nylon. It has foam pads behind all of the nylon webbing to uh, for impact protection. It has this big leather crown pad. Now this is a very very comfortable um, helmet, despite what it it looks like, because um, this helmet, unlike the uh, Canadian one, so the Canadian one, the big problem with the CG634 is these little nylon parts are right here in the front, where there's a lot of pressure on your helmet. So the, the French solved that problem by just putting them out of the way, and it makes this a relatively comfortable helmet. I wish the, the chin strap had more substance to it, though, because it tends to, like, 
as you can see here, it tends to curl up like that right there. And that kind of gets uncomfortable while you're wearing it. That doesn't really happen. And if this helmet wasn't so new and I'd actually get some sweat in it, uh, it would probably st stiffen up a little bit. Um, but it's a very, very comfortable chin, uh, it's, uh, chin strap. It's got three point, uh, it's got a leather, uh, covered plastic chin cup. It's held in place with two snaps. Uh, everything is Velcro adjustable. So it has Velcro to keep the helmet from coming loose and adjusting on the move. It's got slider buckles to manipulate everything. Uh, so this helmet actually is a very, very secure helmet as well. Uh, Paratroopers used this for a long time in France. Uh, the infantry used this for a long time in France, up until they replaced it with Kevlar. It came out in 1978, and they actually used these as late as like 2010, I believe, or perhaps even later with some training units. Um, so this is a very, very good helmet option. You can see the uh, M1 style um, screws. Uh, the bolts are built into like the helmet shell on the outside, but you can see the screws in the A washers here. So this does have a changeable liner. Uh, if you wanted to put a different liner in it, you could put a different liner in it. I recommend you keep the chin strap though, because the chin strap is very nice. Um, everything on this helmet is uh, pretty durable, and this was a, a well-loved helmet, and this liner and everything was so well-loved, you actually see it pop up. This liner was pretty much just dropped into the French um, F2 helmet, which replaced this, uh, which is essentially just a Pazgat shell, and they dropped this liner in it, because this liner was loved so much, uh, by the French army, as, uh, well as the other French, uh, military forces. Uh, you see this, uh, helmet, uh, liner in, uh, the CG634, or something reminiscent of this liner, if you want to go see that, too, uh, but that one has a lot more flaws. It wasn't as good as, uh, this liner, actually. Uh, because they made some slight changes to it that made it uh, worse in a lot of people's opinions. So um, this is my second choice as far as uh, steel helmets go. Um, the reason it's my second choice is because it's um, it's a little bit heavy. It's a little bit complicated. Um, I really like something that's a little bit more durable out there, and uh, this helmet is uh, very, very small and very close-fitting to the head, which is something I like um, on composite helmets. But on steel helmets, I like there to be a little bit more space in between the shell and my head to account for deformation, because uh, steel tends to deform a lot. So when a bullet hits the shell or a piece of shrapnel hits the shell, it bends in a lot further than it will on a Kevlar helmet. The deformation pattern on these is a lot larger than on the Kevlar helmet. So I like to have a little bit more space between me and uh, uh, the helmet shell. So, uh, but all, the, all in all, this is a very, very good helmet. I recommend you guys pick one of these up because they're um, drying up in the market. It's a very, very, very good option. Uh, they're pretty much one size fits all, like an M1. Uh, so, they are getting harder and harder to find, and this will be my my second choice. Now, my first first choice option um, is a very very uh, high quality option. They're around as well, and that would be the uh, Swiss M seventy one helmet. Now, I like this helmet because I've modified it a little bit. I've added a chin cup to it. Um, I like the chin cup. Well, the chin cup actually came with it, uh, but I've owned these before without chin cups. And I like the chin cup. Chin cup helps a lot as far as comfortability goes. And this is the uh, later version, so it has the, the D-ring on the back for hanging. Although this is a very, very simple helmet. There's very little to go wrong on this. Uh, the chin strap and the liner are all riveted together, so nothing's going to come loose. Everything is made out of leather, so it'll pretty much never wear out as long as you take care of the leather and you properly waterproof and everything like that. It can be quickly uh, donned and doffed with this little hook. Um... It's, uh, these aren't really adjustable as far as, uh, they go, as far as adjustment goes, but this one fits actually really, really nice, um, because it is a bracket of sizes. Now, this is a size 57 to, uh, 58, which is, I wear a size 58, but it's still a little bit roomy, so I could wear a winter hat under this, uh, relatively easy, and you could, um, adjust the circumference of everything, uh, because they have these pads here, and, uh, you can take some of the, um, batting out of these pads if you wanted to wear a hat underneath here you can uh reach up and pull some of the padding out of these pads so you can wear a winter hat under it so it's adjustable in that way uh you just have to sit down and uh, do it but this is brand new pretty much unused 
Um, it was so unused in the fact that it didn't come with those little uh, plastic tags in it that the Swiss normally have in there because this one was unissued, actually. So um, it did have a sticker in it, though. I don't know what that sticker means. It's been tried to be pulled off, so it's missing kind of the center part. Um, but this is a pretty much brand new helmet. You can't, you, there's like no sweat in it or anything. All the leather on it is really, really, really nice. I did adjust it for me from how I got it. So, but this will be my first choice. And this is, this helmet performs pretty well. Has a very, very nice finish on it. Um, normally, uh, I'll lift the uh, end up here as you can see. It has a very, very uh, nice finish on it. It's made out of a pretty good steel. The Swiss don't make garbage and they've really only had three helmets in their entire military history. So from like World War One to today, they've had the M1917, which is pretty much a Stellhelm copy. They've had this and then recently they just got rid of this for the shoe berth like two years ago. They started getting shoe berths. Uh, so if you want to see the shoe berth, I have a shoe berth video as well. Um, but this helmet would be my, my first pick because um has a rolled rim it's adjustable, even though it's kind of a cumbersome adjustable uh, thing, so it takes a long time to adjust. But it's um, very, very durable. Um, it's probably not as good at deflecting rounds as the uh, Romanian helmet from the beginning of the video. But uh, this is a comfortable helmet. It's incredibly rugged it's incredibly durable the reason there's a reason why the swiss used it for so long and especially the swiss who are people who are known for just uncompromising quality there's got to be a reason they used it and i i can see why this is a this is a very effective helmet it'll serve them very very good for a lot of years and it's it's got a lot of what i look for um it has the full uh aluminum ring around it so there's nothing to go rust uh, to rust in this helmet as long as you take care of it. Um, the chin cup I, uh, was added to, I guess, improve the comfortability. The chin strap was really the biggest downfall of this helmet because the Romanian one doesn't have a chin cup on it, so you have to either wear it right on the edge of your chin, you have to wear it just beneath your bottom lip, or you have to wear it in the uh, the uh, slope of your neck, which is where your you know neck kind of goes up to your jaw. There's that little fold in there. You have to wear this in there, which tends to bite a lot when you look down, so it hurts. So having the chin cup on there is going to keep it in place on the edge of your chin, which is going to increase the comfortability of this helmet, whereas the Romanian one can't really do that because of how the chin strap is set up to work. Uh, and the French one has it built in to kind of save that problem, but I'd rather have leather than the nylon because the leather is going to be more durable in the long run, I think, than the nylon as long as you take care of the leather. Whereas nylon, you don't have to take care of. Uh, but nylon tends to stink and get pretty gross. And it, uh, if you leave it in the sun for a long time, the sun actually starts to break down the nylon and stuff like that. So this would be my first pick um, as far as steel helmets go from post-World War II to, to you know, replacement with Kevlar. This These would be my, my top three picks. Now, if you guys have an option that you would like to... Uh, uh, that I didn't include in here, but you would pick. I'd like to hear about that in the comments, what your choice of helmet would be. Uh, it doesn't have to be from these three. Um, if you have something else that you would think it was, uh, that you think would work better for your personal preferences, uh, I would very much like to hear about that as far and, and your argument as to why uh, you like it that way. Uh, but these are my three personal preferences, and... Um, I'm going to stand by them because they have a lot of the stuff that I look for as far as shape goes and uh, effectiveness and, you know, ease of maintenance goes. Uh, these are very good options as far as service life goes as well. A lot of these have served a very, very long time. So uh, hopefully you guys like this video. Uh, leave a comment and if you, if you have any questions or concerns and I'll do my best to uh, answer them for you. Also leave a comment if you have any suggestions or if there's a helmet that you think should have been in this list uh, and you want to make an argument for it, uh, feel free to leave that in the comments as well. Um, hopefully, uh, I will see all you guys in the next video. If you're new, uh, hopefully you subscribed and you like this sort of stuff. We did get over 80 subscribers a few days ago, and I'm absolutely ecstatic about that. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, I really love this community. You guys uh, seem to be very, very... Uh, uh, nice to each other and very very nice to me as far as um, giving me information I might have missed and stuff like that and helping me out I very very much appreciate that um, 
So thank you so much, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.